Sleeping is the best. Waking up is the worst. Just five more minutes, mom. But that never really helps, does it? Hey there, snoozers. Trace here for D News. Thanks for watching and check this out. New set, it's awesome. I had a roommate in college whose alarm went off at 7.15 for his 8 a.m. class. The radio, as loud as the volume would go. He didn't even flinch or wake up, but I almost hit the ceiling, it scared me so much. We've done lots of videos on sleep. We even actually have a sleep playlist you can check out. But waking up, some days I just don't wanna get up. Social jet lag, or the idea that we have to wake up before our natural rhythms want us to wake up, affects 70% of the population, according to a study in Current Biology. And difficulty waking up is called sleep inertia. A 2013 study in PLOS One describes it as a temporary period of reduced alertness and impaired performance. Scientific symptoms of sleep inertia are poor memory and reaction time, inability to perform basic math, and the suffering of alertness or attention. These symptoms can persist for an hour and usually occur when you wake up during slow wave sleep. Sleep comes to humans in order across four stages. Stage one is the transition from wakefulness to a light sleep. During this five to 10 minute stage, the electrical signals pulsing through your brain form theta waves. The next 20 minutes is stage two, the brain's producing rapid bursts of activity called sleep spindles, and the heart rate slows and body temperature fluctuates and dips. Stage three is slow wave sleep or delta sleep. This lasts about an hour and brain activity comes in the form of delta waves. People in this stage aren't responsive when you call their name and abnormal behaviors like bedwetting or sleepwalking are a part of the end of this stage. That's where you get to stage four, that's famous REM sleep, when dreams happen, everybody knows about that. When you fall asleep, you go through stage one and then to stage two, then three, four, then back to two, then three, four, then back to two. You'll do this four or five times in a night of sleep. If your alarm goes off when you're in stage three, the deepest of sleep, then you'll be jolted awake and you'll get the worst of sleep inertia. This is usually when people describe like they were being hit by a truck when they wake up. The hormones surging through your body that keep you in a deep sleep are still floating around, affecting your now awake body. Sleep inertia is still being studied. It was only named in the late 70s, so say it with me now. More research is needed, but what we do know is the best medicine is to get out of bed and turn on the lights and get going, because the retina is directly connected to the suprachiasmatic nucleus, or SCN. The SCN controls our sleep-wake cycle and the release of melatonin, which is the hormone that triggers the sleeping part of the sleep-wake cycle. Your phone, that doesn't count. You need to actually get up and see some daylight. It's true that at night, the blue light from your phone and your tablet screens mess with your SCN regulation of that sleep-wake cycle, so don't use them before you go to sleep. But a study in PLOS One found that increasing that blue light in the morning doesn't increase brain alertness during sleep inertia, so grabbing your phone first thing isn't gonna save you. Also, the snooze button is not your friend. If you're jolted from slow wave sleep and allow your brain to drop into sleep again, you're gonna start the whole sleep cycle over, causing you to feel even worse. And don't set alarms every half an hour. You're not gradually waking yourself up. You're interrupting and restarting your sleep cycle over and over again. I am guilty of this, so are many of you. It is the worst, just stop it. Like everything, having a healthy sleep-wake cycle requires effort, like running a race. You have to train to be good at it. Waking up is no different. You can set one alarm, you can make yourself wake up when it goes off, and it's gonna be terrible for a while, but it'll get better. Take down the blackout curtains so you get some daylight, and that will help because your retinas will tell your SCN it's wake-up time. If you wake up early on the weekend, too, you won't throw off your weekday sleep schedule. A morning routine is the best, and everyone is different, but luckily, wakefulness is actually really easy to train, but only you can do it. I used to be a night owl. I'd be up till two, three in the morning, wake up midday. But having to be up every day for D News has made me a morning person in some ways, and it's completely changed my sleep-wake cycle, and you know what? I kind of love it. Do you want to change your sleep schedule? Go ahead and tell us about it down below. Leave some tips if you got some, and make sure you subscribe for more D News.